Welcome to another edition of Fourth and Pain, the only football and pro wrestling show to be hosted by an NFL player and a weight loss champion. That youngster is Redskins defensive end Adam Carricker. Me and Chuck are out in the woods right now. <laughs> Former wrestling announcer, weight loss champion Chuck Carroll here. Be sure to give the show a follow at Fourth and Pain. New content each and every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Sometimes we're classy. Today, we are not. Most fun segment of the week, the Fourth and Pain family segment, where we dip into the ye old mailbag and take your questions from Facebook, from Twitter, some from the YouTube channel. And then in about three minutes, four minutes, actually, we're going to be speaking with your lovely bride, Angie Adam. But we open with a question from Mike in Fremont, Nebraska. They love you out there. Ha uh, Big Red. He, he writes to us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash fourth and pain. Go there and like us. Has Daniel Bryan completely lost his momentum the way WWE keeps screwing him out of the title? I don't think so at all. I was concerned about that. I mean, this is the fourth this is going to be the fourth pay-per-view where you see Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan in a match. It's the third one in a row where they headline it. There's still no champion. They keep taking it from Daniel Bryan. I was concerned about it, but if you saw the end of Raw, he's standing there doing yes, the whole crowd's doing yes. At some point, one word, yes, is going to get old, but it's not yet. Yeah, well, you would think it's going to get old, but... Mm... I'm not sure that it has, and I'm not sure that WWE is quite knowing where they're going to go with this. I think that the way that they had that payoff at SummerSlam was perfect. There was a month's worth of buildup to that match. Remember, he was out to prove himself for months before that, long before he was even in the title picture against John Cena at SummerSlam, and he was the hand-chosen opponent for Cena at that pay-per-view, the mini WrestleMania, the second biggest pay-per-view for WWE of the entire year. He wins the title. It's a grand celebration. Streamers, confetti, the whole kit and caboodle, and he gets screwed. That was in August. Flash forward to October. Guess what, Adam? He's still being screwed. His momentum is gone. Did you see the end of Raw? They're still chanting yes. You would think it would be. In fact, if you turn on TNA Impact every Thursday night, they're doing yes at the TNA shows, which can't be good for TNA. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The fact of the doesn't matter. matter. No, it doesn't. You're he wrong. Should have, he should have won the title and kept it. A I long, agree with that, but you're wrong about his momentum. A ah, long, long time ago. Next question. All right. My turn. Question for you, sir, Charles. Whatever happened to Jeff Jarrett? Was TNA, and also, was TNA better when he was in charge? This is from Tim Fairfax via our YouTube channel. Also, find us on iTunes. Yeah, where in the world has Jeff Jarrett been? You should actually issue a bolo for that guy. He hasn't been doing much of anything, from what I understand, since he was kind of ousted from the organization, which he founded many years ago. Uh, Jeff Jarrett kind of just been sitting around collecting paychecks. I think he's done independent uh, appearances here and there, maybe a quick stint over in Japan, just a one- or two-shot deal. Um is TNA better with Jarrett than they were without him? Yes. I would say so, absolutely. Remember, he's the guy that put TNA on the map. They started running at this little podunk, little warehouse that they called the Asylum up in Nashville, and that organization gained a huge name for itself. He built it to what it is today. Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff, they came in. They did absolutely nothing. I would love to see him back in there. Do you think... Dixie Carter is ruining TNA. That's my question to you, Chuck. I, you know what? Here's the thing, man. I don't want to peel back the curtain too much, but I don't think that Dixie Carter has entirely too much say. She's kind of the figurehead. She's the one that uh, cuts the check. She's the big investor. She's the one that owns the company. But as far as steering the creative direction, no. I don't think that she's ruining the company whatsoever. I don't think that she should be bamboozled and hoodwinked by bigger names such as Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff who come in and claim to be able to save everything. No, leave the saving to a guy by the name of Jeff Jarrett who is the heart and soul of Impact Wrestling and always will be. Still, to this day, I wish the leader of Aces and Eights, they, they played it out well, Bully Ray Fitzwells, the president of Aces and Eights, but to this day, I wish it would have been Jeff Jarrett, the guy who founded TNA, made TNA, and then he was the head and president of Jeff. Uh, Jeff Jarrett was a head and president of Aces and Eights. How awesome would that have been? It would have been sweet. More questions coming up in just a little bit, but I know that this is your favorite time of the show. It is. We're going to bring on my lovely, beautiful, blushing bride, Angie. How you doing, sweetie? Pretty good. All right. Now, 
you two have something up your sleeves here. I don't know what's going on. So what's going on? Here's kind of as I understand it. And there was picture day out there at Redskins Park not that long ago. And Adam, for whatever reason, had his reservations for participating in said picture day. Talk to me. What was running through your husband's head? Um, I came home, and then he got home, and I could just tell something was going on, and I was like, what's up? And he's like, well, we had pictures today, and I, it was really awkward. Like, I show up, and my jersey is in my locker, and I'm not really sure, do I get on the photo and, you know, put everything, even though I haven't been part of the team for, like, a year, like, playing on the field, but I've been around the guys. So it was just kind of interesting to see, you know, someone that's been on IR and now on the pup list kind of responding to, am I part of the team? Am I not aspect of it? Well, I kind of see where he's coming from. He has been away from the field for a long time, but that doesn't mean that he's been away from Redskins Park for all that long. Adam, you've been there every single day. You were there the entire offseason while all of your teammates were off. I think that you're more a part of this team than a lot of people, honestly. You deserve to be in that picture, man. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, obviously there's no privacy for my picture day woes, but that's okay. It's just, (laughs) it's one of those things where, yes, I'm working hard and I'm busting my balls. If I can say that, maybe you got to bleep that out. It's up to you, Charles. But the thing is, I haven't been on the field. I haven't contributed positively, negatively in a long time. And I just felt awkward. And they told me, you're more than welcome to be in the picture. It's up to you. It's your choice. And everyone wanted me in. And once I was in it, you know, everyone was, was glad that I was there. It's just it's one of those things where you start to question whether you're legitimately part of the team if you're not contributing on the field. That's all it is. I know I am, but it's one of those things where if you haven't done anything in between the lines for quite a while, you just start to question the legitimacy of that. I understand that. And Angie, maybe in a, just 10 seconds or less, you can attest to this. Adam, to me, seems to be the kind of guy that, and I'm not just blowing smoke, is an inspiration to the team because of his hard work, his work ethic, and that dedication that he's put in time in and time out. Many guys would have already thrown in the towel, but here he is nonetheless putting in that work day in and day out. Can I find it better than you did, sir? There you go. Angie Carricker, appreciate, appreciate your time on The Pulse. We will bring you back next week. Always a pleasure. Give her a follow on Twitter, at Ange Carricker. Thanks, Ange. You're welcome. I will say this as, as we let her go. I appreciate it, and I know I'm part of the team, and I know I'll be back on the field at some point, so that's ultimately what helps get me through. But we got to move on to our last two questions, running out of time. Weight loss question. Whatever, I'm sorry, is white meat really healthier than dark meat? Samantha, Virginia Beach. Give us a follow at fourth and pain. What say you, Chuck? You know what? This is an interesting one. I knew that I was going to have to do some research, and I was actually wrong. I thought that the answer hands down was going to be yes, it is, but only because from it it turns out it's only because of calories and fat. And even that's not as big of a difference as you would think. Here's the thing with dark meat. It has more uh, iron, zinc, and B vitamins than white meat. Far more. So if you're talking about more protein, more iron, more zinc, more vitamins in general, definitely get that dark meat. It's healthier overall. If you're watching your waistline, that's when you're going to want to stick to the white meat. But don't be afraid to indulge in the leg and the thigh every now and again. Adam, question for you comes from Tom Mansfield in Kennewick, Washington, via fourthandpain.com. Clicked on Ask an NFL Player Anything. He writes, Lolo Jones training to become a bobsledder, and I read where she said she's heavier than she's ever been in her entire life. I question how she bulked up. She said that she did it by eating at McDonald's. Seriously, isn't that the antithesis of athlete training? I would be extremely shocked if a track athlete tries to put on weight by eating a good old Mickey D's. No, that's not the proper way to do it. I'd be seriously surprised if she's doing it that way. Do not ever try to do it that way. I guarantee this is some sort of marketing stick. This is some sort of publicity stunt. She's putting on weight, but I guarantee a professional Olympic champion like she is is not doing it the wrong way. She's going to do it the right way. This is some sort of marketing thing.
Oh, for years and years, McDonald's has been just dumping huge millions of amounts of dollars into that U.S. Olympic yeah. program. Yeah, how is McDonald's and Pepsi, the sponsor of the Olympics, supposed to be the fittest athletes on earth, and it's like the worst place to eat on earth sponsoring it? What is up with that? I don't know, but I still have my McDonald's cup with the original Dream Team, the Dream Basketball Team on uh, it with Jordan and Malone. Classic. And, yeah, that man. is classic. Anyway, we are fresh out of time this week. Thank you so very much for believing in our weirdness. On behalf of the largest arms on the D-line, my lovely blushing bride, Angela Carricker, and the weight loss champion himself, thank you for being a part of the 4th and Pain family. And now, words of wisdom with Adam Carricker. Next time you accuse a teenage girl of overreacting, just remember that a whole bunch of elderly white men shut down the government because they weren't getting their way. <laughs>